Hey yo everyone, welcome back. This video is the fourth video in the JavaScript tutorial series. Good job sticking through it so far. We got a lot to learn though, and this is going to cover some of the basics in JavaScript. Before we start learning the basics though, I did want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain has JavaScript based web development boot camps that you can go to in person. This is something you could take on full time. The housing is at no additional cost. So if you want to take some of the JavaScript concepts learned in this series and convert that into practical experience in getting a job in the industry, you definitely want to check out Dev Mountain. One really cool thing though is they offer online boot camps and they don't just do web development, they also do iOS development, user experience, and I always forget the other one. <laughs> QA testing or quality assurance. If this is something you're interested in, be sure to mention that I sent you their way and they'll give you 250 bucks off. So that's some pretty huge savings. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description, check them out. And now let's move on to some of the JavaScript basics. Let's go back into our JavaScript file and see what we have. This is what we use to manipulate the HTML. That was really just an illustration and we're not gonna build off of that. So I'm just going to get rid of this. One of the things we're gonna talk about in this video is variables. So a variable allows us to store some data. And this is really important when we want to make dynamic applications. And what do I mean by dynamic? By dynamic, I mean the content of the application is not always the same. If we execute it once, it might be a little bit different than if we execute it again. And this is made possible by things changing, such as variables. The easiest way to see this is by getting user input. So for example, we can get user input by asking them what their name is. And then we could make the app say, hello, Caleb. Well, this is going to change depending on what your name is. So that's one way we can make our application dynamic. It's by printing someone's name. So since we're gonna be focusing in the JavaScript file, I'm gonna be closing this explorer and Xing out of the index.html. All you gotta know is that we're including this JavaScript file over there. So we're gonna be using this thing called prompt. And you can see that prompt is an example of a function. A function is something that we can call. It'll execute some stuff or do something for us. And it will usually give us a value back like the output of the function. So to call a function, we use parentheses. So if I was to just leave it like this, we ran the application, we get a pop up that says this page says, and there's an input here. When we say, okay, nothing really happens. In fact, nothing happens at all. <laughs> That's because we're not using the value that we typed in there. So if we want to use that, we can store it in a variable. And the way we create a variable in JavaScript is by saying the keyword var and then naming it something. So for example, we could name it username. So this is known as the identifier. It's what we call the variable. It's the variable name. And we can assign it a value using the equal sign, which is known as the assignment operator. So what we're going to do is we're going to backspace and see that we're assigning the value of this to username. So this prompt function is going to execute and whatever the result is, is going to be assigned to username. That's how that works. So now we can save and refresh. And when we put something in here like Caleb, still nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because we're still not doing anything with username. So we could output it or we could do some operations on it. But what I wanted to show you guys is that you can actually use this console inside of Chrome or Firefox or whatever, whatever browser you're using. And you can dynamically ask the browser questions. So for example, I could say username and you can see it says Caleb. So this basically means that there is a variable in existence called username. And this is all going to reset when we do a refresh. So if I refresh this and let me just cancel that. And now I say username, it says null. So this stuff doesn't persist. It changes every single time we get this web page. As we build more complex JavaScript programs, what's going to happen is we're going to actually connect to a backend, which allows us to save stuff and persist data into a database. But for now, when you're just learning JavaScript, everything is basically going to restart to zero every time we refresh. There are ways to have local state in JavaScript to where it kind of memorizes who we are or what we're doing, but we're not gonna be getting into that right now. So all you need to know is if we do a refresh, we're restarting from square zero. <laughs> is that a word? Square zero? <laughs> square zero is similar to square one, it's just zero base. <laughs> All right, so let's cancel this. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to output this name. And you can do that with another function, which is alert. And we just pass in the username. This scenario, we don't actually have to assign anything because alert doesn't return anything. You can see when we hover over it, at the very end, it says colon void. That's how we can tell that it doesn't return anything. 
void is nothing. If we do that with the prompt, you can see it returns a string, which any sequence of characters is a string, so Caleb is a string. So because this is void, we just call it by itself. Let's save and run. I typed in Caleb, and then it alerts Caleb. Now as you get better at JavaScript, you're going to be better at knowing where to put semicolons and parentheses and curly braces and all these things, but these rules are known as the syntax. Every language has a syntax which basically defines what's legal and what's not legal. Basically anytime we have a statement, which is when we tell the computer to do something, we end that with a semicolon. Now you should also know about white space, which is just spaces or tabs or new lines. These are okay, and in general JavaScript is white case insensitive. So we do a refresh, and it still works just the same. That means you're allowed to be pretty flexible in how you type things, as long as you don't break up a keyword into multiple words. Like, this is not okay. <laughs> you see, we get an error. But basically, everything else is okay. So we can space this out however we like. That being said, no one really spaces stuff out like this. We follow conventions, which are things people have agreed upon. So I'm going to try and help teach you the JavaScript conventions, what's common, what, what people use in the industry. And let me tell you, it's definitely not this. So let's go back to how we had it. There we go. Like I said, you'll pick up on the syntax rules over time, but I'll try to call out anything important. Next thing, you should know how to do a console log. So a console log is similar to the alert and that it will tell us something, but it's it's less annoying because the alert pops up and you can't do anything until you click it. And that's like basically a virus. So we don't want to do that, <laughs> at least not for testing stuff, just because it gets really old. So instead we can do console.log and then inside of the parentheses, we can just put the same thing. So I'm going to get rid of this alert and now I'm going to run it, put in a name and it's actually going to output our name down here, right here, Caleb. Last thing I want to talk about is comments. You can create a comment which is ignored using this double forward slash. This is really important. <laughs> so you can call things out or clarify things using comments. You can also make a multi-line comment using a forward slash asterisk and then ending it with an asterisk for, for, uh, forward slash. So this is not going to affect how our application runs. It's going to work exactly the same way. This should give you a pretty good basic understanding of JavaScript. We learned what a function was. We learned about white space. We learned about comments and we learned about variables. Pretty good start. Thanks guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe. If you like this content, that would really help me out. Also check out the description for some useful links and I'll see you in the next video.